are so glad that you are with us wherever you are, at your home or wherever you are tonight. We're just so glad that you're with us in our sanctuary. We're live streaming WOW tonight. Welcome, everybody. So we're going to have a really fun program tonight. We're going to have um, a special friend I want to introduce you to in a few minutes. And we're going to have some storytelling. But first, before we do any of that, we're going to kick it all off with some movement. So you're going to want to stand up and move around. And our pastor, JD, is going to lead everyone in joy to the world. And it's going to be cool. Hey, all kids, welcome to WOW today. And it's time to sing and also it's time to dance as you move your body. So I want to invite you all to stand up and then let's sing together joy to the world with our body. everyone so um oh hey sparky oh my gosh um hi you seem to be wearing a lot of bells i'm listen i'm just so excited that it's christmas time i want to make sure you heard me first of all and notice how festive i am today as we kick off our first ever wow um, well, I definitely think that you made a festive arrival. Um, Sparky, I really want you to meet some of my friends who are watching from their home. Uh, you can't see them, but they're here with us. Um, they're watching from their homes all, all, all over Cobleskill and maybe even further away. If anyone is further away from that, let us know because we really want to know. So there are a whole bunch of kids that have tuned in and they have tuned in to hear the top secret mission of WOW. The top secret? Nobody told me about a top secret mission. What is it? <laughs> well, our, um, don't tell anybody, but our top secret mission is to decode the true meaning of Christmas. Wow. Like, uh, 
Like a detective would. Yeah, exactly, like a detective would. Each week at WOW, we're going to examine one famous symbol of Christmas you've probably heard about at home, but we're going to uncover what special connection it has to the original Christmas story. All right, all right, all right, all right. Good thing I brought my magnifying glass. <laughs> that is a good thing. I, Very handy. I found it. Yeah. Oh, what did you find? One of those symbols you were just talking about. Oh, yeah? What is it? Does it have anything to do with bells? <laughs> You're exactly right. Today we're going to talk about bells and the beautiful sounds they make and what on earth that has to do with Jesus and the original Christmas story. So I want to take a little pause break and take our listeners at home to our little story nook where we're going to have a listen to a story that tells us more about bells and possibly gives us some clues about what they mean. So let's turn our listening ears on and listen to Rosie, who's going to tell us a story. Okay. Why the Chimes Rang by Raymond McDonald Allen. There was once in a faraway country where few people have ever traveled, a wonderful church. It stood on a high hill in the midst of a great city, and every Sunday, as well as on sacred days like Christmas, thousands of people climbed the hill to its great arch relief. The building itself had stone columns and dark passages and a main room so long one could scarcely see from one end to the other. In the farthest corner was an organ so clear and loud it could be heard for miles around. Altogether, no such church as this was ever seen before, especially when it was lighted up for some festival and crowded with people. But the strangest thing about the whole building was the wonderful bells. At one corner of the church was a great gray tower that rose so far into the sky, it was only seen in very fair weather. All the people knew that at the top of the tower was the Christmas bells. They had hung there since the church had been built and had the most beautiful sound in the world. Some thought it was because a great musician had cast them and arranged them. Others said it was because of the great height which reached up where the air was clearest and purest. However that might be, everyone who had ever heard them thought they sounded like angels far up in the sky. But the fact was that no one had heard them for years and years. They were Christmas chimes, you see, and were not meant to be played by men or on common days. It was the custom on Christmas Eve for all the people to bring to the church their offerings to the Christ child. And when the greatest and best offering was laid on the altar, there used to come pealing through the music of the choir, the Christmas chimes far up in the tower. Some said the wind rang them. Others said that they were so high the angels set them swinging. But for many years, they had never been heard. It was said that people had been growing less careful of their gifts for the Christ child and that no offering that was brought was great enough to deserve the music of the chimes. Every Christmas, the rich people still crowded the altar, each one trying to give a better gift than, the, and than any other without giving anything that he wanted for himself. And the church was crowded with those who thought perhaps the wonderful bells might be heard again. But although the service was splendid and the offerings plenty, only the roar of the wind could be heard far up in the stone tower. Now, a number of miles from the city, in a little country village where only glimpses of the tower could be seen in fair weather, there lived a boy named Pedro and his little brother. 
They knew very little about the Christmas chimes, but had heard of the Christmas service. Between them, they formed a secret plan to go through the beautiful celebration. Nobody can guess, little brother, Pedro would say, all the fine things there are to see and hear. And I, I have even heard it said that the Christ child sometimes comes down to bless the service. What if we could see him? The day before Christmas was bitterly cold, with a few lonely snowflakes flying in the air and a hard white crust on the ground. Pedro and little brother were able to slip quietly away in the early afternoon, and although walking was hard in the frosty air, before nightfall they had trudged so far hand in hand that they saw the lights of the big city just ahead of them. Indeed, they were about to enter one of the great gates leading to the city when they saw a dark shape in the snow near their path and stepped aside to look at it. It was a poor woman who had fallen just outside the city, too sick and tired to even seek shelter. She would soon be so sound asleep in the wintry air that no one would ever be able to awaken her again. All this Pedro saw in a moment, and he knelt down beside her and tried to rouse her. Turning her face toward him, he rubbed some snow on it, and when he had looked at her silently a moment, he stood up and said, It's no use, little brother. You will have to go alone. Alone? cried little brother. And you not see the Christmas festival? No, said Pedro, with a bit of a choking sound in his throat. See this poor woman? Her face looks like the Madonna in the chapel window, and she will freeze to death if nobody cares for her. Everyone has gone to the church now. But when you come back, you can bring someone to help her. I will rub her to keep her from freezing, and perhaps get her to eat the bun that is left in my pocket. But I cannot bear to leave you and go alone, said little brother. We both need not miss the service, said Pedro. So you go. You can easily find your way to the church, and you must see everything twice, little brother. Once for you, and once for me. I am sure the Christ child will know how I would love to come with you and worship him. And oh, if you get the chance, little brother, to slip up to the altar without getting in anyone's way, take this little silver piece of mine and lay it down for my offering when no one is looking. Do not forget where you have left me, and forgive me for not going with you. In this way, he hurried little brother off to the city and blinked hard to keep back the tears he had as he heard the crunching footsteps sounding farther and farther away in the twilight. The great church was wonderful that night. Everyone said it had never looked so beautiful. When the organ played and thousands of people sang, the wall shook with sound, and little Pedro, away, <laughs> away outside the city wall, felt the earth tremble around him. At the close of the service came a procession with offerings to be laid on the altar. Rich men and great men proudly presented gifts of jewels and gold. Last of all walked the king of the country, hoping with all the rest to win himself the chime of the Christmas bells. There was a great murmur through the crowd as the king took from his head the royal crown. All set the precious stones and placed it gleaming on the altar. Surely, everyone said, we shall hear the bells now, for nothing like this has ever happened before. But still, only the cold wind was heard in the tower, and people shook their heads, said they never really believed the story of the chimes, and doubted if they had ever rung at all. The procession was over, and the choir began the closing hymn. Suddenly, the organ stopped playing, and the old minister held up his hand for silence. As all the people strained to listen, there came softly, distinctly, singing through the air, the 
sound of chimes in the tower. So far away and yet so clear, the music seemed, so much sweeter than any sound they had ever heard before, that their people thought to them sick. Then they all stood up together and stared straight at the altar to see what great gift had awakened the long silent bell. But all that the nearest of them saw was the childish figure of little brother who had crept softly down the aisle when no one was looking and made Pedro's little piece of silver on the altar. I'm feeling kind of festive, Sparky, so I'm going to light our Advent candles. This one was for the first week. This one was for the second week. And this one, third week. And right now we're in the fourth week. We're counting seven weeks until Christmas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you know what, Sparky, happens when it's the white candle? It's Christmas. It's Christmas, and we get to light this on Christmas Eve. <laughs> so, what did you think of that story? On a spot? <laughs> yeah. Did you hear the, ta the part in there about the chimes? Or the yeah. bells? The bells, they rang because it meant something. Yeah, there was something happy that happened, and the bells rang. <laughs> That's really nice. Yeah, I think so, too. I had something I was going to say, but I feel like it doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you um, ever get things on Christmas morning that make you happy? Kind of like those kids in the story were giving presents on Christmas. Do you yes, get presents on I Christmas? I do. I do. It, I, I guess you're right. I wonder if the bells would have chimed for my presents. You think the bells would chime if you got presents on Christmas morning? Well, maybe. Well, I'm not exactly sure that's the way it works. You see... I think that the bells ring when we give something away and we make God happy. Not any old time that we're happy and we receive presents. That's not really the way it works. Bells ring and the music rings when God is happy. So I think that you need to hear another story about this so that you understand better. Yeah, and I do, yeah. I'm going to go over here so that I can take my mask off. I want to keep you safe, so I wear my mask around you. But I'm going to go over here now and tell another story, okay? All right. Okay. So to tell this story, I brought some things from my house. Does anyone at home have characters that go with a set that you maybe get out around Christmas time? The set might have um, some characters that look like this that often have sheep around them. We call these characters shepherds and they are a pretty big part of the Christmas story. And actually, that's where we get the idea of bells from. I'm going to tell you this story, okay? This comes from the Bible in the book of Luke. Once upon a time, there were some people outside tending sheep. So that's who these people are. This person has one around his neck. This one's holding one under his arm. Here's another guy with a sheep around his neck. Shepherds were people who loved sheep. They wanted to take care of them. And so even at nighttime, they slept in the field with their sheep. 
So one night they were all outside sleeping with their sheep, taking care of them, when suddenly there was a bright light in the sky. Can you imagine how scared they were? All of a sudden in the sky was a bright light and this beautiful sound. It must have sounded like church bells or beautiful music. And there appeared in the sky angels. I brought two angels from two different nativity sets I have at home. They showed up in the sky and they sang, Glory to God in the highest. We have special news to tell you. Do you know what the news was? They came to tell the shepherds that someone really special had been born. That person was Jesus. And they needed to come to them in the middle of the night with a bright light and beautiful music because this was the most special thing that would ever happen to these soldiers. Shepherds, not soldiers. So the angels came to them and they announced this really good news. The shepherds didn't really know what to think of the whole thing. Honestly, they were probably a little bit scared. But the music was so beautiful, and the words that the angels said filled them with so much hope. It would be like if you were scared sometime in the middle of the night, and someone that you love came to you and said, there's no reason to be afraid. Don't worry, there's something good to look forward to. These angels came to the shepherds and they said, don't worry, something good is going to happen. They said, all you need to do is head over to Bethlehem, where you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So next week, we're going to hear more about the story, and we're going to take these shepherds on a journey. But this week, we're talking about the beautiful music that the angels made when they visited the shepherds. So I want to say a prayer with you. So if you're at home, can you close your eyes and say this prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for the beautiful music that can make us feel loved when we're afraid. Anytime that we're in the dark and we feel scared, Remind us that you have come to bring something really good. That God is love. And because God is love, Jesus was born. And Jesus is the very best gift we could ever hope for. Thank you, God, for the beautiful music that comes through bells, and that reminds us of what the angel said on that very dark night a long, long time ago. In your name we pray. Amen. Now I have a very special treat to share with you. We're going to have um, Miss Amy come up. And each week at WOW, we're going to learn a new line from the song Silent Night. Do you know that song? Silent night, holy night. We thought it would be really fun at WOW to teach you how to sing that song with sign language. Sign language is when we use our hands to talk and speak without using our mouth. So Miss Amy has learned sign language, which is really cool. And I'm excited to see how we're going to sing Silent Night in Sign Language. So Amy's going to teach us the very first line in this song. Silence is, you basically you want to say shh, right? So it's silent. And then night is your hand goes here. And you pretend like the sun is going down. So it's night. So we have silent night. And then the next one would be holy night. And we already know night. So holy is put your hands out like this. 
and you have your two fingers like this, made almost like an H, and then it's holy, and then again, night. The next one is all, and all is pretty easy. You put your hand upside down, and you just go all, and then is is this, hands together, and then all is calm, like you're going to take a deep breath, be calm. Again, it's all is bright. So we'll do that again from the beginning. We'll do it again. Silent night. Holy night. Ooh. All is calm. And all is bright. And that's where we'll leave it for this week. And our next discussion is our, our um, crafts for this week. If you did pick up a little craft bag with snacks, too, mm -hmm. um, yes. that was before our service. And then you can pick it up again at the end of service. And any time this week, actually, Amy, okay. the bags will be on the front porch all week long. People can stop by and pick up a bag. All right. Awesome. So our first craft is our little candy cane. Oh, yeah, Hi, Amy. Tina. I forgot to say that the candy cane actually reminds us of the shepherd's crook. Right. That's why we have candy canes That's at right. Christmas. And then if you flip it over, it's a J. Or if, actually, if I'm going to do it at the camera, it's a J. What does J stand for? And what does J stand for? Very good, Tiernan. Jesus. Jesus. And for us, that's the little jingle bell you can hang on your doorknob. Unfortunately, I had to get two different size bells because Amazon actually ran out. <laughs> so depending on which uh, pack you got, you either got little bells or big bells, but they both end up the same. And you can put these on your doorknob. And as Tiernan said, maybe you can catch Santa coming in if he's using the door instead of the chimney. Oh, tricky. And I'm going to give it back to Pastor Anna now. Awesome. We have uh, one more craft I want to tell you about, and that is this very special Advent calendar. At the end of it is a what? A bell, and each link on it represents one day until Christmas comes. So today is December 2nd, so you would actually take off the number one and the number two. And then every day that gets ready for Christmas, you'll get closer and closer to the bell, which reminds us of how the angels are going to come to announce in a really beautiful way the birth of Jesus Christ. So stop by and pick up your activity bag if you haven't already. And Sparky. I am really glad that you came tonight to our first ever WOW. I'm glad that you got to meet all of our friends at home. I hope that while you're at home this week, you'll come back and look at this video and practice the sign language so that you'll know it really well before next week when we learn the second one. A lot, a lot of my own practice. You're going to have a lot of practicing to do. And you I might can barely move an arm. You might have to take off your bells. Practice in front of the mirror. That's what Amy says. That would really help you learn it better. Sparky, did you hear that? Yeah, a bell went off. I heard a bell. It wasn't <gasps> mine. You know what I think that is? No way. What it's do you think it is? No, no way. No how. Uh -uh. <laughs> I think it's the church bell. Up in our tower of our church, we have a really great big bell. And I think I just heard it ring. And you know what that means? It means that God is excited about Christmas happening. And we're ready to announce it to the whole neighborhood. Maybe you even heard the bell at your house if you live in Cobleskill. That is really cool. So Sparky, you want to say goodbye to all our friends at home? All right. Bye. <laughs> we will uh, see you I next week. Probably see you next week. I hope so.
maybe you'll bring another thing tangled up on you that we can study as a clue. Probably. Yeah. It's funny so, how that works out. Yeah, isn't it? We're going to finish off tonight by singing Jingle Bells, and I have a special guest friend, Pat, who's going to come and play his guitar for us. So if you have any bells at home that you want to play, get them out, because we're going to sing Jingle Bells at the top of our lungs. Get ready. It's going to be awesome. Pat, take it away. Ha, ha, ha.